This is your WCIA3 forecast first, sponsored by Matex Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Electrical. Hey, good evening to you tonight. Thanks for joining us here. 10 o'clock straight up, and it is still quite windy out there. Those winds were gusting over 40 miles an hour today. We're back down around 15 miles an hour right now, but that wind did help to kick that temperature up into the 80s. But look at this. It's still 72 in Champaign right now, 73 in Effingham and Springfield. I mean, it feels great out there tonight. Temperatures tomorrow back into the 70s. The problem is a lot more in the way of cloud cover, which has moved in tonight turning into quite a bit of rain, showers, maybe even some thunderstorms as we head into tomorrow afternoon. We'll talk more about what to expect with that coming up. WCI3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. Three inmates in the same jail died over the last few years. Why loved ones of inmates are worried it could happen to them too. A mural meant to cover graffiti was vandalized, but one teenager is fighting paint with paint. And they come up through the ground like they're rising from the dead. Let's head it our way in a matter of weeks. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. It's kind of hard to live without your son. Unimaginable. A grieving father is sharing his heartbreak after his son died in custody. And he's not the only one. Good evening. I'm Paul Chikini. And I'm Jessica Coons. Families are fighting for answers from the Vermilion County Jail. We told you about three people who died in custody over the last few years. Tonight, we're hearing from one of those families. But that's not all. WCI 3's Bryce Beeman joins us now. Bryce, you spoke with someone who has a loved one currently in that facility. Yeah, one woman says her brother is sick. She thinks he has COVID. The family also suspects it's an outbreak. And they're concerned about what that could lead to. When something like this happens, they don't kill only the person. They destroy the family. Kenneth Moore is grieving the loss of his son, Jamie Moore. He died in 2018 at the Vermilion County Jail. After a fight with officers while being moved from his cell, he was tased and died several hours later. Six officers were involved. His cause of death was tied to pre-existing heart conditions. They need to be looked at because too many people's dying. Last year, Tommy Dalton died in the same building from pneumonia. Now, a third inmate, Joshua Edwards, died in April. All three men were from Hoopston. To have three of them from the same little town, uh, I think there's something wrong. Meanwhile, Tashima Holmes is speaking out for her brother, who is currently at the Vermilion County Jail. What is it that you all are denying these inmates help for? Send a team of people in, you know, tell them you have a, a, a case where the entire you know, jail is sick, and you all need help. Holmes says her brother is sick. She said when she spoke with him last, he said a lot of inmates in the jail were also sick. They suspect COVID. So I reached out to the Vermilion County Health Department. While they can't say which congregate living facility has an outbreak, they said two have a COVID-19 outbreak. Possible to separate people slightly, but you really can't just send everyone home for a week to quarantine away from each other. And Holmes is worried her brother will suffer the same fate as Jamie Moore, Tommy Dalton, or Joshua Edwards if his condition is not treated. And if you're a guard or nurse or anybody and you're watching, you're watching somebody go through something and you could change the situation, that's really ridiculous. Both families hope a change is on the way. And if we can't count on our police force, who can we count on? Protect and serve, not to beat up and kill. He said while he doesn't want the police to fund it or gone, he hopes speaking up will hopefully spark some reform. It just bothers me. They, they're not trying to clean it up. They're not trying to do any better. And if there's some bad eggs, just get rid of them. You know, keep the good guys. We need them. I reached out to the Vermilion County Sheriff's Department and did not hear back. I also reached out to the Vermilion County Coroner for the autopsy results for Joshua Edwards, who died April 11th, and was told they won't be in for weeks. The Moore and Dalton family have legal representation. Back to you, Jessica. All right, Bryce, thank you. Jamie Moore's father and Shima Holmes both say they want to see changes. We asked them for specifics. They say they want information relayed back to families, better ways to see or talk to their loved ones, and both say they want their loved ones treated like people. Roughly 30 people marched in memory of two inmates who died at the Iroquois County Jail last year. The families of Andre Maiden and Jason Fancher, along with the Illinois Prisoner Rights Coalition, are calling for better medical care. Two men died a day apart in August while awaiting separate trials. Their families say Sheriff Derek Hagan's officers ignored complaints the men were sick. 
it makes me feel really like sad and it makes me feel angry um, because he's hiding behind an Illinois State Police investigation when we are just trying to create these demands and policy changes so no one else dies in this jail. Hendricks says they're asking for transparency, access to timely medical care, and for the jail to follow the Prison Rape Elimination Act. Two men wanted for a murder agreed to return to Illinois. Clayton Anderson signed a waiver this morning in Las Vegas court. Thomas Miller signed his last week. Both will return to Shelby County a month after their charges in Nevada are resolved. They're also charged with fleeing police, firing a gun, and damaging a car in Nevada. Detectives in Shelby County accused Anderson of killing his grandma, Sherry Hubbard. Police say Miller helped him cover it up. Police in Effingham are investigating after someone broke into legacy Harley Davidson overnight. The owner says the suspects crashed through the windows, stole five motorcycles and took off. He says he has full confidence that whoever did this will be held accountable. I'm going to forgive these guys, but they will get caught. They will be punished at some point in time. Um, what can you say? He says if you see any bikes like that or have a suspicion that one might be stolen, give police a call. We have an update from five. A Decatur High School student and several volunteers are repairing this mural that was vandalized. Lillian Renfro has been working on the mural since mid-March as part of her Eagle Scout project. She wanted to beautify the wall because it was filled with graffiti. Vandals wrote in spray paint, quote, this isn't your art class, this is real vandalism. And quote, art belongs to the people. It's definitely frustrating to find those messages. It's hurtful. But I think the people who've left them, they don't quite understand what's going on out here. Art belongs to the people. It does. This, this is not an attempt to take that away from people. It's, we're trying to create something beautiful for people to come and enjoy. She says they are prepared to cover up any more graffiti and the mural will be finished. Illinois is close to moving into the bridge phase, the next move toward normalcy. The governor's previously said the main hurdle was vaccinating enough of the state's older population. Now, over half the adult population in the state's gotten their first dose, which is enough to put the state all the way into phase five, not just that bridge phase. The governor says we could see the bridge phase within a week if the current trends hold, but medical professionals are cautious about reopening, especially with dropping vaccination rates. Over the past two to three weeks, we have seen a slight uptick um, not a big surge, but more than I'd like to see in people who weren't vaccinated and who are getting the variant. The CDC announced today masks will no longer be required for fully vaccinated people when they're outside, except in crowded spaces. The Sangamon County Public Health Director said she thinks that could lead more people to want to get vaccinated. More than 81,000 people got their shot yesterday. Seven-day average is more than 105,000. While more than 50% of adults have had at least one shot, just over 30% of the entire state is fully vaccinated. More than 2,500 new cases and 23 additional deaths were announced today, two of those in Champaign County. The positivity rate in the state, 4.1%. It's a season of coughing, sneezing, and watery eyes, but for some, allergies could turn dangerous. Plus, they've been silent for 17 years. What will soon be making a lot of noise in Illinois. All right, Kevin, today was a dream temperature-wise, I thought. But that wind got me again. I don't know. I thought it was a little warm today. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. Was it? I don't know. It was perfect. Yeah, well, I, I'll tell you, I have not turned on the AC in my house when I left to come to work this afternoon. I was like, ooh, it's a little warm in here. I did turn mine on today. See? There it is. Yeah. Hey, everybody's house it. is different. They heat up more I, quickly. I guess so, yeah. All right, fell short of the record, but still we made it into uh, the mid-80s here today, 83 degrees. When we come back, we'll talk about those winds that have been so strong. Was today the warmest we've had so far in 2021? And we'll track the rain that's moving in. Coming up.